and let's go back to our presentation and we're going to talk about how we can use Flipgrid, not just in our classroom, but to help us accomplish some of the things we want to do with distance learning. Hopefully everyone had a chance to actually sign up and signing up with your Outlook account. If you did not get a chance to sign up in the presentation, I have a hyperlink right here. It says sign up to Flipgrid. If you want to go ahead and click that now and create your account, that would be awesome so you can work along. Today, our session is going to focus on creating a grid. Your grid is basically like your classroom. It's going to be the drop for all of your topics. So you may want to create a language arts grid or a math grid science or Virginia studies. So think about those as your classrooms or as your subjects. And when you post topics, those topics will be housed on that grid. Now, when you add topics, it's very easy. And we're gonna go through that together. So first thing I want us to do is to go ahead and we're signed into Flipgrid. Laura, do we use our um, our flip code that we got when we signed on? Not right now, no ma'am. Oh, okay. Just sign into your grid so you can see everything that you've created. I'm going to pull up my grid so you can see that. Educator login. So when you log into Flipgrid, it's going to take you to your dashboard, your home screen. And on your home screen, you're going to see all of the grids you have created. Everybody, let's click add a new grid, please. When you add a new grid, you have an option, and I'm gonna switch screens so I can tell you a little bit about those options. And we have a mixed group right now, so your option may be different based on your grade level or where you are in the division. If you're in high school, Clements, or more, your students have an email address that they use regularly. They know how to log into the email address. So you would choose school email, and it's gonna prompt you to type in the domain name for your district. Your domain name is everything that follows with at, at pgs.k12.va.us. So if you teach at an upper level and your students use email, you can select the grid to sign in with the school email. Students, if we were in a classroom setting and I could issue my students ID numbers, I would absolutely choose that for the elementary. And once you've chosen student ID, you'll have a window pop up that allows you to add student's name and assign a student code ID number. And it can be as simple as two digits, an alpha and numerical digit. So it could just be two. I would suggest using that student ID number they use for lunch. So it's universal. They'll log in with their same ID numbers they do for AR or for Clever. The QR codes can be printed and taped on their folders, their AR folders. And if they have a device with a camera, they can simply just scan their QR number. Now, for today's purposes, we're all going to create a public grid. A public grid is a grid to where anyone with the URL, the URL is something you could post on your school website, your personal website or share through Remind, which however you communicate with your parents and students. And anyone can view the grid, the topics and the videos. They just cannot post to a public grid 
you have to actually give them guest access and we'll talk about that later. But if you wanted students to be able to post and then have their parents go on and view the content, you would set up your grid like we're going to do today with the public grid access. So everybody go ahead and select public for me, please. And at the bottom, it says create a flip code. You get to personalize the name of your grid. So after flipgrid.com slash, anything that follows can be customized. So if you wanted to type in your name, the subject with your initials or the class code number, you could actually customize the URL for your Flipgrid. If that does not matter to you, don't worry about it. If you want to customize it, just backspace and add your own URL. And if it's not available, it will tell you. If it's available, it's green. Now let's click Next. Now when you click Next, it's going to tell you, okay, this is a public grid. And if you want it to be just a little more private, you have the option to create a password for everyone to enter in order to view your grid. So if this was something you were doing for a science fair or students were doing a reading and you did not want everyone to have access, but parents knew the password, you could have that option. It tells you two quick notes, anyone can view it, but they have to log in to record a video. We're yeah. not going. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. You want us to name it first, PD and your PG's flip guard, flip grid? You can name it anything you'd like. That's the name of my grid. It's gonna tell you it's not available. Oh, okay. Cause it's not letting me go anywhere until I name it. Yep. And if you wanted to put practice or test, that would be okay too, or just leave it as it is. It gives you a code by default, but you do have the option to personalize. All right, guys. Once you've named it, we're not going to set up a password. Let's click Next. And on slide nine, when we were talking about the student options and the student email options, I have that information there. So when you go back and set up your grids with your school email or you want to enter your student names, I have the directions there on slide nine. All right, you should have gotten a sign. It says your grid is ready. Now you have a couple of options here. Some of us already use Remind. There may be a handful of us who use um, Google Classroom. Not many of us use Teams, but if we did, we could link it directly to Teams. And then the less than slash greater than slash is embed. That will give you the URL to embed your grid. Now we're gonna go to our grid. All right, guys, when we look at our grid, we're just going to take a tour of it. Your banner hasn't been customized yet, but we're going to get to that. When we go across, do you see your flip code? When your students log in, whether it's the first choice or the second choice when setting up our grid, to find your grid after logging in, they would enter the flip code that you see there. That will also, you see how your flip code is in blue? Mm -hmm. Click on that, that's a hyperlink. That's gonna give you the student's view. So when students go to your grid, that's what they're going to see. That's a student view. So that's kind of cool. I like to, to be able to see what it looks like in real time, not just on my teacher dashboard. Now, going back to our Flipgrid screen, we have a co-pilot option. A co-pilot is simply a collaborating teacher. If you wanted another teacher to have access and to be able to work, add topics, 
or even grade with the rubric and flip grid, we could add a co-palette. And if you click on co-palette, you're going to see you're going to add that teacher just by entering their email address. It's super easy. How do we get back to our um, grid? If you look at the top, you have two at least two windows open. You're in the tab of the student view. If you just close the student view tab. All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. So the shareable link, if you wanted that URL, you could click on the rocket and share and you're gonna get the link option. We're not gonna look at that right now. Instead, I want you to flip down actions. I think I'm lost. Oh, goodness, okay. How are you lost? What do you see? Oh, goodness me. Well, I made, I made a grid the other night, but um, now what do I see? I say, when you told me to click on that uh, blue hyperlink, I did that, and then I went to, I think I, the student I view? see my title, which is Title One Superstars now, my name and everything. Um, say hello on Flipgrid, and there's a little hello sign. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Okay, at the top, mm -hmm. do you see a cookie trail? It says my activity, my grids, mixtapes. Do you see that cookie trail at the top? Say hello, share a fun fact about yourself. That's what I see. All right, you're. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, nope, I don't see that. Do you see green in the corner? It says flip grid. Yeah. Click on that, please. Oh, wait, you sit in the corner. I see just, that's the sign of it. You're in the student view. I need you to close the student view window. Okay, how do you, oh, do you do that with the hyperlink again? No, just click on the X at the top, right here. Okay. Let me see if I can switch my screen share. All right, do you see at the top here? Yeah. I have an X. Mm -hmm. Close the window that you're in right now. Okay, one minute. I'm, gonna, I'm still trying to go and toggle between these two things. I think I closed out of my flip grid. I'm just gonna sign back in there again. That'll and, work. Well. Close, close your browser that had the flip grid in it, reopen it and sign in. I think that would be the easiest route. Yeah, we can all be on the same yeah. page. Yeah, I just did that. So now I'm back to like where I could add a new grid. I, I already have, I guess, one grid, the Title I Superstars, I named it. Um, all right, the one we just created is the one I want us to play in. Yeah. Okay, can you open that one back up, please? Go ahead and do what you're going to do. I'm probably going to just watch. <laughs> well, no, you're on the screen right here. Yours says add a new topic, or does it say add a new grid? Okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right. And then we go to public, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> and then it and, says, go ahead. And then just click next, and it should get to you've created a grid. See, I can't, when I hit that next, it says create a flip code. Students use this to join your grid. And it says flipgrid.com slash AG1986 available. And then if I hit next, do I have to click that? Maybe I have to, oh, let me see if that works. Hmm. I don't do any, it doesn't do anything for me when I do, do hit next. All right, Tracy. Yeah. Watch my screen. Okay. Add a new grid, public, mm -hmm. next, it's going to require you to name it, <clears throat> test grid. Okay. Let me, let me go back. Hmm. Tracy, hit new grid for me, please. <clears throat> it 
and type in test grid for the name. Mm -hmm. Public PLC. Right. Next. Okay, I got it. Uh, I think. All right, click next again, please. Okay. Now go to your grid. Okay. Test grid. Girl, stop, please. <laughs> Sorry, guys, Pomeranian interference. Thank you. No, okay, is everybody here? I don't want anyone to be lost. Please do not get lost and then feel like you can't use this tool. Everybody's screen looks like mine? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so we saw the student view. We saw how to add the co-palette. Mm -hmm. Cher's gonna give us the link option. We're not gonna look at that now. The pencil is a shortcut to edit, but under actions, it's gonna give us everything that we see on our screen in one menu plus other options. If I taught several classes, if I taught high school English block and I needed to have a different grid for each period I taught, I wouldn't have to recreate my grid, I could just duplicate it once I had my topics created. And then I would have the same grid duplicated multiple times for my different classes. So duplicate grid is fantastic if you teach multiple subject areas of the same content. Grid notifications, that's going to send us email prompts. Team integration, we're not going to go into the Microsoft component and export the data that will actually give you student information once they've responded in the grid. Everybody, let's click on edit grid, please. On Edit Grid, this is where we get to personalize it and to make some decisions. This information we see here is the same information we saw initially when we set up our grid. Um, the flip code, the grid type, whether or not we wanted a password. When we get to features, drop down notifications. The notifications will be emails that you receive either daily, weekly, or every time a new video is posted. Whether or not you have video posts, they will email you daily. I would suggest either never or every new video because you do not want Flipgrid to email you daily. So I'm gonna select every new video. So I'll get a video, a notification every time a video is selected. Download and I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my computer just froze. How did we get to this section that you're on? All right, when you go into Flipgrid, uh -huh. do you see your test grid that we just created? Mm -hmm. You click on to... Luana, click on Flipgrid in the corner, and that's going to take you to your grids. I'm on the one that says Baker Practice, yes. Perfect. So your screen looks like this with Baker Practice. Yep. Hit the pencil for me and let's edit. And that's going to take us to. I'm sorry. Nope, you're perfect. Gotcha. So okay. right here in features, the download and share. So once students create videos, this allows them to download the video they've created. I don't see any harm in students being able to download the video, so I always turn that green. Captions. I think captions are important. Um, students watching the video, seeing the text, hearing the speech, that develops fluency and it, it helps with comprehension. So I always turn on captions. The grid followers allow students to receive notifications when new topics are created and new videos are recorded. This is really for my high school or upper. When you post an assignment in Flipgrid, students would receive an email letting them know that a new assignment or new video was posted. If that was something you wanted to turn on, you could for student assignment notifications, but if you use Classroom or Teams or something to that effect, you could always just post the URL to your grid. Active status, drop that down and let's talk about active status. 
Active, everyone can see and participate in your grid. Hidden means your grid is still there, the information is still there, but students will not be able to see it. And caption language, if you are an ESL teacher, if you have a very large ESL population, you could turn on those captions we just flipped on and you could change the language they're displayed in. And if you drop that down, you can see you have quite a few options, quite a few languages the captions will be translated in. So I think that's kind of a cool tool and it helps with your ESL population. All right, personalization. To personalize this banner that you see across the top of your Flipgrid, you can, this top box, just like we did in the Google Drive, we can go to our folder at the bottom and we could go to our pictures or wherever it is and we could drag and drop into that space to upload our own banner, or we can select a banner from the bottom. Everybody choose a banner from the bottom. You have featured, you have nature, people, textures. So peruse the different banners and select a banner for your grid. When you've selected the banner, go ahead and update grid. That worked. <laughs> Yay. Yes. Now, when we've updated our grid, we're going to see our banner that we've selected. If you wanted to put your class name, you could always create a, a PowerPoint slide and save it as a JPEG, mm -hmm. um, kind of the same way I had the PD in your PJs banner. So if you wanted something with your name or more customizable, you could always create that JPEG in PowerPoint. By default, Flipgrid is going to assign you a topic. It's a say hello on Flipgrid topic. Um, I, I never keep those. So I want us all to go over to actions and let's drop that down. And it's going to let us record a response from there. We can add guest. So you do not have to be signed in to comment. We can add it to the Disco Library, which we'll talk about at the end. We can hide the topic, we can move the topic. What I would like for us to do is delete the topic. It's gonna say, hey, are you sure you really want to permanently delete this topic? Let's say, yes, we do, and select delete. And that would work for any topic that we no longer wanted displayed on our grid. All right, guys, we're gonna add a new topic. Everybody click add a new topic, please. This is where it really gets exciting. Hopefully, um, I was able to look a little bit this morning. I gave you guys three very different topics to kind of peruse and look at before we came together in our session this morning. One was, uh, upper level on Patrick Henry. It was content area, language arts, and U.S. history. I had one about midway with the rock cycle, and then one that was very primary with the phonemes. Flipgrid can be a lot of fun, a lot of interaction, a lot of engagement. For today's purpose, I'm going to show you how to load it with content. So it's content aligned, and the purpose is to extend learning. Um, for right now, let's call this a test topic. Recording time, drop that down. Depending on what your assignment is, what your expectation is, you can limit or extend the amount of time students are given to record their video as limited as 15 seconds or as extended as 10 minutes. If we were doing something with a novel study or the students were working in teams and you may have multiple people presenting, that may determine your time limit. 
I like three minutes. Three minutes is usually my default. So I'm gonna select three minutes. Now the prompt, it says prompt, but I want you guys to think about the step-by-step -step directions that you're gonna give students in this topic to complete. So you already have your idea together. You know that it's gonna begin with this first one. It says record video. It can actually begin with you modeling or explaining the assignment. You can upload a video from your device. You can share a video from YouTube. You can select an image, a GIF, an emoji. You can link it to a Microsoft or Google document on your drive. If you use Kahoot or any of these apps, you can link directly to that URL. hyperlinks are really important because you can only feature, they call it a focus. They can only feature one focus. But in my assignment, I can include several YouTube videos if I say watch the first, if I could spell this morning, it would be helpful video here. And if I highlight this and I go up to link, everybody type a little bit of text in your prompt box, highlight one or two or three words, and then click on insert link. I can paste my YouTube video URL right there. And the words that I've highlighted have now become a hyperlink. So even though I can only share one focus video on the side as the main topic, I can have my students watch several videos by putting the URL in a hyperlink. Do you guys understand hyperlinks? Mm -hmm. And on the slide presentation, I do have an entire page that talks about hyperlinks. And it would work this way as well. If I had a PDF, or a Google Doc or slide I wanted students to access, I could have them linked here or as a part of my focus or assignment. So I want you to think hyperlinks. I'm gonna type in the word hyperlinks with an exclamation point. So in your prompts, there are your directions and include hyperlinks. So that's what I'm gonna type in there. Type your directions here. And that's where you want to include your hyperlinks. And the option is if I wanted to record the video, I could select the record option and record directly here into my prompt. Or if it was a video I had recorded prior, I could upload it. I've had a lot of people when I was listening to the response say this would be great when I'm doing um, story time and I'm reading to my students. If you've already recorded the video, you could upload it directly to this platform. Or if you've uploaded your video to YouTube, you can link it here. Let's all click on YouTube. To include it, a YouTube video as your focus, you're just going to paste the URL right there and then click next. To upload an image, it's going to take you to your computer and to add a GIF, everybody let's click GIF. You can search it. Everybody let's, let's search, um, I don't know, coffee. You're going to get a lot of options that you could just select and that could be the focus of your Flipgrid video. 
me personally, that's where the, the content's going to come in. You're going to want to either record the video of yourself doing the activity with the expectation students are going to continue or model it, or a YouTube video with content or something meaningful from Drive. So we don't want to create our topic yet. That's all we need to create a topic, but I want us to select more options. The topic tip, I, I don't ever fill that out, but if you wanted to, you could add a, a tip or clue. Topic attachments, this is great to integrate the instruction, those core content areas. I'm sorry, I missed where you, where is that? At the bottom, where it yes. said create grid, and just to the left of it, it said more options. Oh, no, that says. Cindy, at the very bottom. In the blue? No. Right beside where it says create topic, it should say yeah. more options. Sorry, thank you. Yes, ma'am. And I'm going to open, you guys stay there. I'm going to just show you really quickly. my Patrick Henry topic. Okay, when I created the Patrick Henry topic, I was really thinking about the content area. So you can see in my directions, there's a hyperlink to the speech in a PDF. There's the student assignment. If you guys were with me last week with the Google Docs, we talked about collaborating through a slide deck. My focus was a YouTube video, and then here for assignments, I have linked two topic attachments. You have an option of attaching up to nine. Mm -hmm. So here I have the URL, and then I had to name the title attachments. So if I was creating a true assignment for students, I would have the, the attachments in addition to the hyperlinks in my directions. Now, just below topic attachments, do you guys see topic status? Video moderation. If I'm working live with students, especially high school students or maybe some saucy elementary students, I'm gonna turn this on. Students can post as many videos that they would like, but other students could not see them until I have approved them. So they can continue to post, but they'll be hidden from view until you get a chance to watch the video and to determine whether or not the content that they posted is appropriate. If you do not moderate when they post, it goes live. Now, beginning of the school year, you set up your expectations. You talk about digital footprint digital citizenship, that shouldn't be a problem, but know that that option is there, just in case. I'm gonna turn that off. Status, this is kinda cool. When you drop down status, active means anybody can post, it's live. Frozen, if you wanted to go ahead and start putting your topics up for the, the nine weeks, or maybe even for the school year, your main idea topics, you could freeze those. If they were frozen, students could see them, they just cannot interact with them. And hidden is just what it infers. No one can see it but you. Student to student replies. I turn this on. I like to keep that on because it's that collaboration piece. A lot of times a student will respond to another student's video because it's inspired them. It's given them a great idea. And students, they really enjoy responding to one another. It's how they interact and they get to create the videos. So it's much more personable. And it also goes along with the computer science SOLs for networking and collaborating. If you chose to freeze 
or to turn your grid off, you have that option there. Video features. When you drop down video selfies and styles, you have a choice. Students can just create the videos, they can just create the selfies, or they can't do anything, they can only upload a document. I always do the selfies and the videos because why not, it's fun. Video title, I turn that on. Um, to view count, that just allows students to see how many times their videos were viewed. The sticky note option, and we're gonna look at that in just a moment, but the sticky note option is basically a little text box. When you create your video, you can type notes in the little text box that only you can see to sort of keep your, your notes and in, in your speech in an outline format to help you stay organized. Video editing, students can trim and arrange video clips. You can turn that on. I don't think that can hurt. If you find that's a, a time issue, you could always turn that off. Attaching links. Well, students can turn in the Google Docs, the Microsoft documents, anything here. So turn that on so they can turn in documents to you as a part of their assignments. And just like the interaction piece, they can like one another videos. I turn that on as well. Basic feedback. Flipgrid has a very generic rubric because this is a computational, um, an artifact basically. So you can score it. It, it can be a problem-based assessment if you'd like. So the rubric set up in Flipgrid is the idea is clear and the performance. So it scales it on two topics. If you wanted to create custom feedback, it's going to give you a window to create a new rubric and add your own criteria. What did you expect the students to give you in the video? And you could add those components. So as you go in and score them, you can just select those. I'm going to just use their basic rubric. And if you have set up everything as you'd like, go ahead and create your topic. Now, the Patrick Henry topic, I'm going to show you here. Some of you, I see I have five responses on that. The student view, if a student logged in and this was their assignment, we talked about the directions and the prompt. You can see it's very clear, step by step, they know what to do. I have the directions embedded with hyperlinks so they can have easy access to the documents I've requested them to go to. And then of course the slide deck, which would be part of their final assignment. And those attachments are listed here too because I included those when I was in the edit. All right, guys, any questions on how to create a topic? Where is the student view? Right here, do you see the world? It says flip code. Yeah. Click on the hyperlink. That's after you create your topic, right? Yes, okay. ma'am. Yeah. I see it. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. No questions about creating a topic. Let me go back. I had trouble responding to the videos. I could video them, but I couldn't figure out how to post it. Good how, question. Do you, how, would they, how would the kids actually post a video response? I had to watch the, um, how, the how the students can um, add a video. That yes. was the help desk. <laughs> I'm going to go through that with you guys. Okay. For a student to respond, they're going to click on this big green plus sign. And that's going to open up the camera view. Let's see, I know I had a 
the camera, you should get a pop-up that allows you to access the computer's microphone and camera. If you did not select allow, it will not allow you to post a video. So just make sure your pop-up window, you select allow. Now, if you have your pop-up windows blocked, that could also cause a problem when trying to video. So if you're having trouble recording a video, I would say troubleshoot by checking your browser options. Make sure you do not have pop-ups blocked. And when you open the camera, be sure to choose allow to have access to your microphone and camera. Does it automatically post after you finish? Because I, I had no problem video and it just didn't like save it. Because when I went back, it said that there wasn't anything response there. Did you follow through and go next, take the selfie, next? Did you no. prompt it? You had to go through the entire process. It'll prompt you at the bottom to record the video, then you'll click next. It allows you to watch the video and discard it, but you actually have to go through the prompts until it okay, says. Okay, well, it kept repeating the same thing. When you had next, it kept repeating the video that you had just recorded. Hmm, I'm not sure. When you guys opened the camera, this icon here that looks like a little, I guess a little flip of a page, this is your sticky note option. Remember I said if you wanted to type notes to help you as an outline or a skeleton of what your video should be about, your main ideas to keep you on track, you could post your sticky note. And the sticky note, if you click and drag and drop it, it's movable on your screen. So your eye focus is not limited to just looking in one direction. You could center it. The first link here lets you change your background and some filters. That's a lot of fun for kids. It was a lot of fun for me. You can add text. You can add an emoji. And for the kids who may not want to show their faces, you can put an emoji over top of their face in the video. So it's their explanation, but their face is not on display. And even in the filter, there's a real pixely. So everything is very pixely and, and blocky and identity is hidden. So students have a way who are shy to kind of take a back seat to that. Um, one of my favorite features here is the whiteboard blackboard option. That will pop out into this space. You'll have your pen, your markers, you have color changing options and you can actually record your video all in the blackboard or whiteboard space to where you're modeling a, a math algorithm or the content that you wanna show. If you have an image of it, you can put the image up and use those same tools as well. So I like the blackboard and whiteboard option because you can actually show the information you're trying to put across. And I believe I have a hyperlink also on how to post a video. Um, I really wanted you guys to respond to the topics that I had posted prior to the session. So you had an opportunity to touch some of these tools and we can talk about why did my video post. All right. Hyperlinks, we talked about hyperlinks, attaching files. Okay, now I wanna talk about sharing options. Because our grid is public and we can have public viewing, we may want public comments or video responses. So right there in our topic, beside guest view, you should see guest code. Everybody click guest code for me, please. If I was sharing this out to adults, parents, or even in this situation right now with students, I could use the guest code and anyone can post on the grid without signing into a Microsoft or Google account. If I do not use this guest code, folks will have to sign in to a Google and Microsoft account. 
So go ahead and turn on your slide to type it guest mode so it's green. Okay, just, just, um, okay, there we go. And this URL, this is what you would share, whether you share it on a site, the Remind apps, Class Dojo, whatever form of parent-student communication you use, you can just share that URL out and parents will see this topic, students will see this topic, and anyone can post to it. Now remember we talked about an edit, that moderator setting to where you would view the videos before they went live. I absolutely recommend that you have the moderator setting on and you are viewing videos before they go live, especially when you share it to where anyone can post because that's basically being anonymous and we know what our kids can do when they think we don't know who they are. So make sure you have your moderation setting on in settings and that URL is going to share your grid with anyone and allow anyone to post video content. Would we use that URL if we we're posting these onto like our Google site for people to click on? Yes, Casey, that's the exact URL you would use. Okay. Now, if I was in the classroom and this was a center and I wanted my students to be able to take their iPads or Chromebook, whatever device they had with a camera, I could print right here the QR codes so they could just go up and scan and it would take them directly to my grid topic. And that's going to be true whether it's a publicly shared or a private grid that you've set up. You can always take out those QR codes and post them in your room to be a part of a center. All right, guys, any questions so far? All right, in the top right hand corner, let's click on the word Flipgrid again. That's going to take us to our grid page. And some of us may have more than one grid. Some of us have two or more. Give me a shout out if you have more than one grid. Yes. yes. Well, I have this grid. I have two. Beautiful, beautiful. I had quite a few emails saying, you know, I went ahead and set this up and even set it up with the Microsoft email accounts. That's awesome. So from our home page, we have the same actions that we had if we opened the grid up. I'm going to just open Caitlin, I didn't want to single you out. Was everyone able to hear what Caitlin said in her video? Barely. Yeah. <laughs> if you didn't, that's on the Patrick Henry. She, she did a great job of, of talking about how she would use Flipgrid with her students to model the algorithms and the process and to explain and then have that collaboration piece of them commenting and responding on one another's videos. Um, and that's on the Patrick Henry. If you want to go back and I'm going to show you a couple of things here in the teacher view, and then we're going to talk about responding. So in the teacher view, I, I did not change my rubric. So all I had were the two set up already by Flipgrid, and that was ideas and performance. And if I was a teacher and I really wanted to score K-12 
Caitlin, that was a fantastic idea. Very well thought out. Her performance, absolutely a five. And then I could write teacher comments. And I could send the feedback in a link to my parents, or if I set it up to where I had student email addresses, I could email the feedback that I've typed. So this is a rubric to score the video, which makes it even more, um, more valuable. Also in my teacher view, I have the ability to reply or like Caitlin's video, and if I was to reply, I don't know how this is gonna work with Zoom, but we're gonna find out. Okay, it, it tells me it, it's already being occupied. I kinda thought that. But I could respond to Caitlin's video right here with the same camera options we looked at as a participant and a respondent. So to respond to a video, we just click on the big green plus sign and it allows us to interact and post our response. All right, guys, do we have any questions so far? We talked about hiding, frozen, hidden, um, I think we have covered everything. I just wanted to give you a couple of tips. All of those Google documents I created in our sample topics, I didn't spend a lot of time working on them. And the reason is because I, I kind of have some Google search tips. If you're looking for a Google doc or slide that has already been created by someone else, and when I say there's a lot of awesome content out there already created by educators, we do not have to recreate the wheel. In our search topic, make sure that we include what we're looking for. I was looking for phoneme segmentation and I wanted a Google doc. And what I was able to pull up was a fantastic PDF that had the image in color and the letter blocks below it. One search, it was the top search. If I wanted to Google slide deck, I would write slides there. Or I could just do a phoneme segmentation PDF in my search. Images is the same thing. We just wanna make sure that when we do a Google image search, we hit tools, and we choose an option labeled for reuse because we don't want to use something um, that is not allowed to be shared without permission from its author. So your Google searches will save you a lot of time in the long run. Um, I did the same thing with Patrick Henry's speech. So it was not something that I spent a lot of time planning. I just searched smartly. Anybody have any tips on how they search Google? Still learning. <laughs> Those keywords are perfect. And even putting a plus sign between your search, or if you have a word that is essential to your Google search, put that word in quotation marks. So that means everything in the search will have to have had that keyword in it. So your, your Google search saves you time. And don't ask Google long-winded questions. Keywords, main idea, leave off the what is and how come. All right, our, our last slide or our 29th slide has everything that you need to know with Flipgrid. Everything from how to get started, which we're already started, we're rolling. How to um, ideas, how to become Google certified. They have levels one, two, and three of certification if you're interested in that. And it's very easy. I, I was able to get certified just creating this presentation and going through the steps and using grids I had created in the past for, um, I guess, cool. certification purposes. The Disco Library. The Disco Library is an entire 
by definition library that you can search content area already created in Flipgrid. So if you wanted to see what somebody else had already done with the rock cycle before you created your own topic, you could go to the Disco library, search rock cycle, and see all of the topics that were already created with their resources. I found um, a great link on how to teach remotely with Flipgrid. It's a YouTube tutorial. It basically goes over some of the same things we discussed with using and integrating the Google Docs slides into the Flipgrid platform. And that does it, unless you have any questions. How did you on Google search, how, can you tell me again how you turn it so it would be things that you're allowed to use? Sure. It's settings. So Casey, once you search, make sure you hit image. Okay, images. If you're in all, it's not going to do it. So this is just going to give you permissions for images. Okay. And when you clicked images, if you go to the far right, you should see settings and tools. Yeah. Click tools. Okay. And you should have some options there. Label for reuse is usually the one I go with, my default. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. I'm going to drop the attendance form. in our chat window. And before you do the attendance, make sure that you save your Flipgrid and leave that window open because part of your attendance and your points, because I know you guys are going to really work on this, I wanna be able to, to make sure you get the points that you've earned. Include the URL by clicking share and then copying and pasting that URL that we created on our grid today and there will be a place for you to respond to a topic. And my folks who are having issues, make sure you go all the way to the end with the next, 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 and you should have some language like post or finished or something to that effect. So make sure you go all the way through the prompts there on the bottom right. The URL for your attendance form is here and from what I've heard, we really get spring break off, so I was not going to do a PD in your PJ session over spring break. I thought we all just needed to sort of unwind and decompress. But on that last slide, if you have recommendations for a future PD in your PJ session, I have a form set up to where if you want to tell me what you would like to see after spring break, some ideas or things that we could cover in our sessions. I would love to hear from you and, and maybe plan sessions around what you would like to do. Guys, we're at 11. We spent our hour together. It was awesome. I hope you learned something and you're excited about making your videos and how you're going to use Flipgrid. Are there any questions? I'm looking at the attendance thing. The, do we do the topic guest mode or just the the regular URL. Please do the guest okay. mode. So okay. if I'd like to comment or say something, I have that option. Good okay. question. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you guys. Yes, thank you. I, I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. I hope to hear from you on your suggestions. And if you have questions, please email me. I try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you, Laura. Thank you guys. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. It's not letting me paste it. How do you, um, the URL? Did you hit the clock, the copy? No, I didn't.